I've got five IEMs to share with you this week, and they all range between 170 US dollars and 220 US dollars. Each model here has really strong marketing claims about its value and its benefits, but I wanted to know which one was actually the best. And so I've measured and compared each of these across multiple genres, across multiple source devices, to get a handle on how each one sounds and share that with you so you can make an informed decision. And in the end, I'll tell you how my favourites here compare to a couple of other favourites in the same sort of price range, specifically the 7 Hz Timeless and the T-Audio Elixir. Plus, I'm continuing to build my IEM tier list, so I'm going to be giving you my tier rankings for each of these at the end as well. So there's lots and lots to watch out for and to stick with me through this process. You've made it to the final in a five-part series of videos, or maybe you've just arrived. Today's video has us looking at the Kiwi Ears Quintet and comparing it to the winner of the last four videos. And if you want to see how we got to the result of the winner that's made it this far, then you will want to stop here, go back and check out the previous videos, and then return here once you're all up to speed. Of course, if you're just interested in how good the Kiwi Ears Quintet is, you can watch on, I'll describe it in full, and then of course compare it to another great IEM that I'm not going to tell you which it is at the moment. And so without further delay, let's start talking about the Kiwi Ears Quintet. And I'm going to kick things off by saying that I think this is a gorgeous looking IEM. The front of the shells on these, the faceplate of the shells, is this beautiful, very soft kind of satiny matte silver finish with the Kiwi Ears logo just kind of very lightly embossed in there. I think they look absolutely amazing. Indeed, all of these look pretty good, but it's the Kiwi Ears Quintet that I keep looking at, wanting to interact with. They're just gorgeous. Before we go any further, I should say a huge thanks to Linsol for sending out the Kiwi Ears Quintet and for sponsoring Passion for Sound. And then to introduce the Quintet, because there's a lot to talk about here, these come in at $219 US dollars. And for that price, you're getting five different driver types here. We've got the obvious, sort of usual suspects of dynamic drivers, we've got planar magnetics, we've got balanced armatures, we've got electrostatics, and then piezo electric as well. And where things get really interesting is that it's actually the planar magnetic driver that's doing the treble in the quintet. So you've got the dynamic driver doing the bass, you've got balanced armatures doing sort of the mid-range or upper mid-range, I believe, and then it's a combination of electrostatics, piezo electric, and planar magnetic handling the treble. According to the marketing, the planar magnetic driver is able to deliver excellent quality treble from 4 kilohertz all the way up to 40 kilohertz. And then the piezo electric has been thrown in there to help provide a sense of kind of tactility and detail to the treble. Now, how well that works, I can't tell you. I can't break down the sound of this clearly enough to say this is doing that and this is doing this in terms of the sound quality. But I will, of course, tell you in a moment how it all comes together as a finished product. The combination of drivers within the Kiwi Ears Quintet delivers us an impedance of 32 ohms and a sensitivity of 106 decibels per milliwatt. In terms of accessories, the cable, the tips, the carry case, all that's fine. And so from here, the key thing is to jump in to how they sound. All of my testing across all of these reviews was conducted using the Chord Mojo 2, the Chord Poly, and the Final Audio E-Type ear tips. And I chose those tips because they give me a reliable, comfortable seal on every IEM, and that way I had a consistent baseline for all of these in terms of performance. After listening to a bunch of tracks, the one that I settled on to make my notes for this particular review was Better Things by Massive Attack. And the first thing that I noticed about the sound from the Kiwi Ears Quintet was the wonderful sense of clarity and articulation they bring to the sound. They're quite a different tuning from anything else in this five-part series. When you look at the measurement graph of these, it might look like the bass is very secondary, and indeed it is secondary to the mid-range and the treble, but they're not a completely bass shy IEM. I reviewed the Sivka Nightingales a little while ago now. They're a very mid range focused planar magnetic IEM, and they went a bit too far into the mid range focus and lost a lot of bass. In the case of the Quintet, I think they balanced it really nicely. It's still a mid range, treble, clarity focused IEM, but the bass is good and present. On a track like Better Things, you can feel the bass the way you should. What's quite impressive about the quintet is that they've managed to deliver this very clarity focused, mid and treble focused sound, whilst also maintaining a wonderful sense of smoothness and refinement in the sound. Because of its tuning, it does start to border towards fatigue for me because it lacks the bass and so I want to turn it up more. But in terms of the quality of the delivery, the sounds themselves are so refined, so smooth, that combination of drivers seems to be doing a wonderful job. As you'd expect, the vocals and the mid-range have a wonderful sense of focus and clarity from the quintet, and all the treble is crisp and extended, but as I've already said, very well refined. So they're definitely a very enjoyable, very well thought out design. They're not going to suit everybody, they are definitely a mid and treble focused IEM, but I think this is what I would call a good execution of that tuning, whereas for me the Nightingale just missed the mark a little bit, it became too focused and too limited. 
you could easily use the quintet across a huge range of genres without any issues, whereas not so much with the Nightingale. Of course, if you're into bass-oriented tracks, these are probably not going to be the right choice for you, and therefore you'd probably want to go towards something like the EA-1000, the MP-145, or the OH-10S. Those three out of this roundup are the three strongest in bass, each in their own ways. But for now, the big question for me was, with its unique tuning, is the quintet going to be more enjoyable to me than the current winner through the last four videos? And this is your last chance to use the links down below in the description before I give away the winner. Is the quintet going to be better than the Heidi's MP145? The Heidi's MP145 has literally knocked off every other IEM in this roundup by being the last man standing each time. And so the quintet has a tough battle ahead of it, but so too does the MP145. Also, don't forget that after this, the winner of this one gets to take on the 7 Hertz Timeless and the T-Audio Elixir. So there's plenty to play for here. Let's start with the silver nozzle version of the MP145. Keeping in mind it's got the tuning nozzles, so I've put the silver nozzles on there. You get all three in the packet if you haven't seen the review. I've put the silver nozzles on. I'm comparing it with the Kiwi's Quintet, still using better things by Massive Attack. And the first thing that I notice is that going from the Quintet to the MP145 makes the MP145 sound boomy. They're not a boomy IEM, but this particular track, particularly knowing that it's Massive Attack, they are quite a bass-oriented, or at least this album, with quite a bass-oriented sound. And so the contrast between the quintet and the MP145 is vast. Having said that, I think the MP145 is probably the more accurate representation. I've heard this album across a whole bunch of systems, including speaker systems, great car audio systems, headphones, earphones, you name it. And I think the MP145, whilst it does boost the bass a little bit, I think the MP145 is the more accurate sound here, in terms of being closer to how I expect the original recording to sound. Now that doesn't automatically mean that the MP145 is better, because many people are going to love what you're hearing from the quintet. And specifically what that means is that the MP145 is trading off some of the tactility and the energy and the clarity that the Quintet brings to the table. The MP145 is an easier listen, but in some ways the Quintet can be more exciting and more engaging. As I listened to a bunch of different tracks across both of these IMs, the thing that kept standing out to me was that the Quintet is technically very, very impressive, but it's also harder to listen to. With all that energy happening in the upper registers, the upper mid-range, the treble, it can very quickly and easily get fatiguing. Now, of course, if that leans towards your tastes and or if you've got a smoother, richer sounding source chain, then the quintet could be just right for you. In terms of how it's done, in terms of what it's aiming to do, it does it incredibly well. It just so happens for me that the MP145 is the more consistently enjoyable listen as it's been throughout all five of these videos now, or all four, it wasn't in the first video. And so the MP145 once again takes the win for overall enjoyment for me. I think it's a wonderful and very enjoyable IEM. It's not perfect. It's not going to have the dynamics and the energy of some of these others if that's important to you. But for an IEM that's a little bit smooth, a little bit bassy, but with a wonderful sense of clarity, space and imaging, the MP145 is absolutely brilliant in my opinion. As are all of these. They're all fantastic. There is not an IEM here that I would be unhappy to own. But if you were to give me the choice of all of them laid out in front of me, the MP145 is the one that I'd reach for most. And so with that in mind, let's now see how the Heidi's MP145 compares up against the T-Audio Elixir and the 7 Hz Timeless. For this final comparison, I was using the track Playing God by Polyphia. This was a track recommended by a patron. I've now given access to a shared playlist to all my Patreon members at the passionate and above levels, so they can suggest tracks to me that I'll then use in these reviews. And on this particular review, it was Playing God by Polyphia. Starting off, the MP145 sounds brilliant, as you'd expect. It's crisp and detailed, but with plenty of bass weight and punch to the sound. As I listened more and more, I just felt like there was nothing lacking from the MP145. Going over to the T-Audio Elixir brought a slightly more spacious and open sound, a little bit leaner as well, not lean, but leaner than the MP145, and reminded me yet again of just what a ridiculous IEM they are. The tonal balance from the Elixir is better than the MP145. It's a more neutral sound. I shouldn't actually say better. That's all in the eye of the beholder. But I think if you're looking for something that's closer to natural, the Elixirs are a better choice without losing bass punch, weight, tactility, etc. That articulation that I just mentioned is definitely the party piece of the Elixir. They do that so, so well. I think due to the Piazza Electric Driver that they're using. 
but everything is not all in favour of the Elixirs. The MP145s, once again, and this is a bit like it was with the OH10S, they still and again deliver a little bit more texture and presence in the upper mid range. So if you do like to hear the breath in vocals, the texture in vocals, the MP145 has a slight edge there. As I listen more and more back and forth, I think if I had to choose between the two of them, I think the T-Audio Elixir would just take the edge. And I think it's because I prefer that slightly more neutral tuning that's still very balanced across the board with that wonderful sense of articulation. But having said that, if you're looking for a sound that's got a bit more oomph behind it, a bit more bass presence and bass weight, but still without losing clarity and texture, that's where the MP145 is fantastic. Having said that, delivering a bit more bass, but still having clarity and texture, that's where the Timeless comes to play. Switching over to the 7Hz Timeless against the MP145. And it's got a bit more crispness and articulation to the sound, but it also makes it a bit less easy to listen to compared to the MP145. I feel like the bass from the MP145 is a bit slower perhaps than the Timeless, and so it comes across a bit fuller, even though when you look at the measurements, the Timeless has a bit more of it. But I think just the speed of the decay, the amount that it lingers, makes the MP145 just come across a bit more full-bodied down low. And ultimately, what I was finding as I went back and forth was that they're fairly interchangeable IEMs. In terms of sound signature, I think design-wise, the MP145 is way ahead of the Timeless. It's a bit of a wonky design, the Timeless, with the round faceplate and the funny angle of the nozzles. I'm not a huge fan of the look and feel of them. But I think sonically, they're very, very similar. I think the Timeless has a slight edge on the overall soundstage size and the sense of articulation that it brings. And that comes back to that very slight bluntedness to the sound of the MP145. But then the MP145 comes back with its slightly fuller bass presentation. And I mean fuller, not more, but the sense of presence and weight behind it is a bit stronger. And the fact that it's smoother and easier to listen to without losing out on clarity. And so for me, all three of these IEMs, the Heidi's MP145, the T-Audio Elixir, and the 7 Hz Timeless, these are all spectacular IEMs at the price in my opinion, and they're all deserving of S tier rankings on my tier list. As for the rest of the IEMs in this roundup, so we're talking the Heidi's MS3, the Simgot EA1000, what am I forgetting? We've got the Kiwi's Quintet, and the Eco OH10S, my brain just went completely blank then, I think all four of those are also absolutely fantastic, but they don't quite get in the S tier for me, and that's because they are just a little bit happy in the treble in different ways. It's either a slight lack of refinement in the energy coming from something like the OH10S, or it's just a little bit too much in the case of the MS3, and then in the case of the EA1000, things were just a bit flat sounding. And then of course we've got the Kiwi Ears Quintet here, which has that wonderful clarity focused tuning, which is beautiful, but just not quite as relaxing to listen to. And that's why it slips to an A tier for me. If you're not familiar with how I do tier lists, it's always about pure enjoyment. I'm not worried about technicalities. I'm not worried about price. I'm worried about which ones would I want to put in my ears and not take out. That's an S tier ranking. An A tier ranking means it's exceptionally good, but it's one that I'm not necessarily going to want to live with as my one and only. And then of course B, C and Nope tiers, they go on from there. But as yet, there's no IEMs that have fallen below an A tier. We've been very lucky in the last couple of videos. And so make sure you stay tuned if you want to see me go through my old collection. I've got that plan coming soon-ish, where I'll go through some old IEMs and I'll rank them on my tier list, share that with you. And then of course, all new IEM reviews, they're going to go on the tier list straight away. So if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell. Those are coming up in the future. But for now, I'm going to wrap this one up here by saying that you really cannot go wrong with any of the five IEMs I've talked about here. For my taste, the MP145 is probably the best. But that's for my taste and my preference away from treble and towards a slightly smoother listen. I think all of these are delivering something exceptional in what they do. And if your ear sensitivities are a bit different to mine, if treble doesn't bother you like it bothers me, you might actually enjoy the extra bit of energy that some of these bring. And if you're not familiar with what I mean about our ears making it sound different and different treble sensitivities, I did a review a while back called Why All IEM Reviews Are Wrong, and I'd recommend that you check that one out if you don't know what I mean. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description down below. If I forget, just Google Passion for Sound, all IEM reviews are wrong, and it should come up. But for now, let's wrap this one up here. If you've liked this video, if you've liked this series of videos, please hit the like button. And as I said before, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. I've got plenty of great stuff coming. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.